Total Screen proudly presents their official podcast, On Screen, with your hosts, Tyson Gifford and William Rorig. everybody and welcome to On Screen, the official podcast of the Total Screen. My name is Tyson. My name is Will. And today we are going to be talking about the first four episodes of Justified City Primeval. We are also going to be covering what's coming up in the horizon. We're going to be talking about a few trailers and a video game port that's coming to the Nintendo Switch in our news segment. Let's get started with On the Horizon. On the Horizon is where we talk about stuff coming up in the next week or so. We don't have a lot coming up that really fits our demographic, I guess. But we do have a few things. Killing It is coming on Thursday, August 17th on Peacock. This is its second season. First season was really funny. It looks like they're heading in a kind of different direction with the second season. The first one was literally about killing snakes as uh, um, invasive species and getting money and, and an entrepreneur trying to make money so that he can start up his business. And this is how he ends up trying to do it. That was like the first season. Second season looks like it has nothing to do with the whole snake storyline. It's something else going on. But yeah, it was a really funny comedy. So it's good to see that returning. And so Mm -hmm. soon on August 17th on Peacock. Oh yeah, definitely. Then we have Blue Beetle opening in movie theaters on Friday, August 18th. This is the second to last of the original DC slate before the James Gunn takeover. But this is, as we've talked about before on the podcast, this is an example of of James Gunn saying that the Blue Beetle character is the first character in the new uh, DC slate, I guess. I guess, so, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, if it works out, I guess, or it, it could be the first character if it works out, I don't know. But uh, that makes it a little bit different than, say, like The Flash, which is going to be kind of completely unrelated to anything happening in the new DC universe. But that is coming on Friday, August 18th in theaters. Also coming on Friday, August 18th in theaters is Strays. This is the new kind of filthy comedy that's got a Will Ferrell playing a dog. And it's a bunch of dogs. They're strays. And they plot revenge on the owner of Will Ferrell's character for being kind of an asshole. And they, they're they plotting their revenge. And they're stray dogs. And they're talking. And they oh, yeah, do yeah. drugs. And all sorts of other stuff happens in the trailer that looks like it could be fun. Mm-hmm. That is coming also on Friday, August 18th in movie theaters. And that is it for our On the Horizon segment already. Now we're moving on. Now we're moving on to On Beat. On Beat. On Beat is, of course, our news segment, and we have two trailers we're going to go over and also a little bit of video game news. Starting with the trailers, we got a trailer just today for The Continental. We had had a teaser trailer before, but we really didn't have any idea about what the actual story was. We only knew, like, small details, like it was going to be following Winston, which is Ian McShane's character in the John Wick movies, and it was going to be following him when he was younger. That's kind of all we really knew about it. Right, yeah. Uh, We got an actual trailer. Action, and it looks great. It looks like this is really lives up to like what John Wick's all about, you know, like oh, a yeah. really fun oh, yeah. action series. Uh, it's got some cool stuff going on with uh, the Continental and all the kind of mythos and world building that happens in the uh, John Wick series is all seems to be in there as well, which is going to make it like a really fun uh, movie to watch. And yeah, our series to watch. It's a three episode limited mini series. I'm excited for this. So you're still not caught up on John Wick. We're going to we're going to be catching you up on John Wick in future episodes of this podcast uh, before the Continental comes out. But what did you think of the trailer? Yeah, it looks fun. Yeah, I mean, it looks like John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Looks yeah. like a good time. And that, so that's the Continental. Then we also got a trailer for season two of I Am Groot on Disney Plus. Did you ever watch season one of I Am Groot? Uh, I, I have not. I have not either. I that kind completely of, I wanna... slipped my mind, to be honest. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not tied into the MCU. It's like an outside thing. Right. And they're like shorts. They're not like actual full length episodes. There's not like a continuing plot or something. So it's one of those things that can easily just kind of slip by you. But yeah, it makes me, I saw that seeing the, 
watching the trailer for season two makes me kind of want to go back and watch them because you could probably watch the entirety of season one in like one sitting pretty easily, I imagine. Oh, yeah, definitely. They're all like short episodes and there weren't that many. But yeah, I mean, it looks cool. Still looks like it's fun, like it's got a lot of personality to it. Nothing to go by. I haven't seen the first season, so I don't know if the, if there's a, a quality level that I'm not understanding or something. That's it for our trailers, but we also got some news this week, some video game news. And even though it's just a port, it's kind of a big deal story because this is like a heavily mythologized story within the game industry or the game community that this was like something that could never get again. This is going to be something that, you know, because video game preservation wouldn't be able to exist for this game, they could never make it work on anything else. That was kind of the narrative that was floating around in the gaming community. Uh, that's why I heard. I don't know, like, how much of that was actually true. I mean, they obviously they figured it out for this. But yeah, it's coming to Switch and PS4, not Xbox, because it was already available on modern Xbox platforms through backwards compatibility. Uh, We're, of course, talking about Red Dead Redemption. Oh, which yeah, we yeah. Didn't, <laughs> we didn't get to yet. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Red Dead Redemption is coming to Nintendo Switch and PS4. And, uh, and it's a bare bones port. It's not a remaster. It's just a port of the original version. Uh, nothing's been touched up or changed. Which is funny because rumors uh, for like a month now that they were doing some big remaster or remake and people were getting hyped up for that and this just drops. Well, I mean, they might still be doing that. That's not that's not something that's never been done before. I mean, a good example of that would be, I believe it was uh, Knights of the Old Republic. I think they announced the remaster, they, or the actual remake, like a oh, full game yes. remake, before they announced the, and they the, dropped port the ports to the, to the Switch. And um, now that remake is in development hell. <laughs> <laughs> but even still, the point being that, like, I think they announced the remake before they announced the ports, you know? So it, yes. it's one of those things where it's like it doesn't deny that the possibility of them actually doing a remake or a real remaster of Red Dead Redemption. It could also be it's something like maybe they intended to do that and they just kind of got like, oh, this is taking too much time and effort. Let's just drop it as a port. But Red Dead Redemption coming to Nintendo Switch and PS4. No PC version, which is causing a lot of salt. Again, weirdly, no PC version, just like originally. I have no clue why. It's fine. IGN actually had an interview with uh, Take Two CEO about this, where they asked him, you know, why it wasn't a remaster or a remake. And I mean, he gave like a bunch of non answers. He said, oh, well, you're going to have to ask the studio. So sometimes we have a vision for a remaster or remake, and sometimes we don't have a vision. And so we just release the original. I mean, that's, yeah. there's, there's always, whenever you have, whenever you're dealing with something like in the video game industry, if it's not through one source, like if it's something like a Nintendo game, it's through one source, it's straight through Nintendo. But whenever there's like multiple companies involved or something, there's always like a little game of like, oh, you'll have to ask this person and you'll have to, it's like a Kiru when they're like moving around, like, oh, you have to go to this department and I have to go to that department. I remember that happening with, uh, was it Bayonetta? I think with yeah. Bayonetta three, where like every time they, asked Platinum Games about they'd say, oh, you'd have to ask Nintendo. And then when they asked Nintendo, they'd be like, oh, you have to ask Platinum. <laughs> so, well, I think me, that's like just... Said, like, you have to ask Nintendo, because Nintendo's the publisher, and Nintendo dictates the marketing schedule for the game mm-hmm. as the publisher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's just yeah. the thing you end up with. When you have multiple yeah. companies involved in something, even if it's just a d- developer that's separate from the, the publisher, anything like that, you're always going to have, like, who should be talking about this kind of thing, you know? And right, unless there's, right, like, a real yeah. cleared outline in place between them about who gets to say what, they'll, they'll usually just avoid it and kick the ball down the line. Right, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And like, they asked him why it wasn't on PC or if it was going to come to PC. And he said that, you know, basically you have to ask the studio if they have something to announce, they'll announce it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. We'll see what ends up happening with that. Like, they could have something else in the works for all we know. I don't know. Maybe yeah, it's coming to PC eventually. Maybe there's a, a full remaster coming to PC and the other systems at some point. Yeah. I mean, yes. the news is for people who love the game, like, uh, it's available on more platforms now. It's available on PS5 via PS4 backwards compatibility. It's available on Switch because 
I remember being a Xbox 360 and PS3 game, it was up until now only available on modern Xbox platforms through the backwards compatibility. PS4 has no compatibility with PS3. Mm-hmm. So if you're on PlayStation or Nintendo, obviously Nintendo never got a version of a game on any of their consoles before. But yeah, if you were on PlayStation or Nintendo, you did not have access to this game until now. Yeah. Well, even more importantly is now it's a portable game. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's it for our news segment, and now we're going to move on to our final segment of the show, Full Spoilers. This week we are talking about the first four episodes of Justified City Primeval, which is of course based on the Elmore Leonard novel City Primeval High Noon in Detroit, which is a continuing story of his Raylan Givens character. This is from creators and showrunners Dave Andron and Michael Diner or Dinner, I don't know how his name's pronounced, who both were writers and producers on Justified. They were not the original showrunner of Justified, though. That was Graham Yost, who is a producer on this show but is not running it. So, we got our first four episodes. This was something that you in particular were really excited about. I remember, I think you picked Justified as a pick for Advocates one time, like years ago. Yes, um, yes I did. So yeah, yeah. Because, excellent show. How I'm does, how does City Prime Evil live up to it for you? Oh, no, I'm interested in your opinion on this. You probably <laughs> guess, guess mine, but I'm interested in yours. I, uh, well, I well like... first, first, before we get to your opinion, I just want general boilerplate. What was your opinion on the original Justified show? Oh, I love the original Justified show. I think that there's parts of it that aren't as good as other parts. I think there's parts that are just awesome. There's parts that are kind of episodic, and I'm not as into, like, episodic television. I'm more into serialized, you know? But right. they started getting more and more as the seasons went on into, like, more specific seasonal stories and, and like, larger arcs that carried on through the entire series. Series, like the relationship between Raylan and, um, God, I can't even think of his name right now. I don't Boyd. Know, and Boyd. The whole they dug coal together bit, which was like a line throughout the show. And it was, I think, the last line of the entire series, too. The dual protagonist angle of the series, where they had both the primary protagonist and the primary antagonist both serve as dual protagonists for the series was was pretty unique. It also was not planned. Yes. Because, all, uh, yes. Boyd Crowder was supposed to die in like the first episode, I think. Yes. And uh, they liked the character and the actor so much that they kept him around and started playing with the connection between him and Raylan. It became a bigger part of the story. And then in doing so, they did that whole dual protagonist thing. Another thing that kind of is interesting about the original show was that it was originally made to be very episodic, to be yes. very episode of the week with like no real ongoing plot continuity. And that kind of changed because TV started changing around that time. Like it had started to change before that. And then by the time like season one was airing, TV had basically completely shifted towards a more serialized model. And so they started kind of getting even, especially after the first season, getting much more specifically tied into like seasonal stories. Oh, yeah. They started following a seasonal villain and a Mm storyline around that. Which obviously made it a much stronger show than Mm -hmm. probably what it was originally going to be. So with that in mind, let's hear your thoughts on this new series so far. I like it. I think a lot of the side characters I'm not kind of as invested in yet, on the protagonist side especially. Yeah. Um, on the antagonist side, there's a few more that are a little bit interesting, but even there, like, I think this is really coming down to, like, maybe two or three really interesting characters, whereas the original series had, like, maybe five or six really interesting characters right from the get-go, you know? So it's a little bit harder yes. to get attached to a bunch of characters. The primary attraction is going to be to Raylan Givens and Clement Men Sal, or, or yes. the Oklahoma Wild Man, as he's called. Um, those are going to be the two big draws as far as being interesting characters on screen. I think by episode four, you're starting to get a, a bit more other interesting characters and you start getting into the Albanians where they could become more interesting, perhaps, as the series continues on. But still, I'm not too terribly invested in anybody on the Detroit Police Department side. Right. The one detective there, Raylan's partner, 
He's pretty fun. Yeah, but I mean, is he as fun as, say, the one sniper guy I'm, from I, the original Justified right, series? No, no, I'm, I'm not like necessarily comparing them. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm just saying like it's it's not. If the character doesn't show up on screen, I'm I'm not bothered. Right, right. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm not like, no. oh, I miss. No, this and it, it, it's a fair criticism of show so far. So far, like the supporting cast is a bit weak. I would like on to the see antagonist them, side, it's a little better. I would like to see them do more with these characters for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, on the antagonist side, it's a bit better. Again, to me, I'm enjoying the series. The series is great. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's as strong as Justified was. Yeah. But it's also like this isn't Justified. Like, I got to keep the perspective. Like, they're not trying to be Justified with this. They're trying yeah. to, like, do their own angle. It's a different setting. It's everything's a little different on it. Right. I, yeah. do, I do like modern Detroit as a setting, though. So yeah, that's, same. That's a setting that I enjoy just because it's, it's kind of a fucked up area. And the way you can kind of show that in film or television is, is interest makes it an interesting setting so i do like that i have to ask you they had raylan's daughter in like the first three episodes yeah uh, i've only seen the first four you've seen the first five and we're only talking about the first four but in the fourth episode his daughter's already gone she's like left i don't know if she'll ever play a part in this it again so it makes you wonder like if there's really much of a point of building on that relationship i don't but, know what they're going to do with what, that what's interesting though is that his daughter was played by Timothy Oliphant's real life daughter. Yes, Vivian Oliphant. Yeah, which is, which which is, is pretty interesting. interesting. Yeah, uh, but I'm I'm curious what you thought about the the daughter father daughter relationship in the series. I mean, that's all right. It felt kind of like it was in the way of mm-hmm. the storyline, and I they think eventually was, brushed it aside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was it was clear like she was kind of like a plot device to get Raylan in that situation mm-hmm. in the first place to get him to Detroit and involved in this case, and to keep him invested in the Clem aspect yeah. of of the job because you give him a reason to really hate the guy. Yes, you give him a reason. Yeah, exactly. You make that connection, but then like otherwise, she just kind of like in the way of the narrative and once the character's job is fulfilled they send her off so it's like yeah it's not my favorite part of the show so far yeah it feels like one of those things where it would have been better if they either dropped it entirely or like wove it more throughout yes and they kind of didn't do either they kind of like went some middle ground between those two that doesn't quite work as well right yeah exactly so i i don't know if they're going to, like, do anything with that in the future, if she's going to come back for any future episodes, who knows? Yeah, I know I was, I was watching it. I, I've been watching this with my mom, and she was really annoyed by the daughter character. Every time the daughter was doing something, she's like, that stupid kid. Like, yeah. <laughs> it was right. really bothering my mom, like, when the kid, like, wandered off. And even I was like, ooh, in Detroit. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, off why and go down she, bad like, streets in Detroit. Wander- yeah, I was like, why is she wandering around? She didn't even, like, see to have like a purpose for it she's just like doing it yeah but then we got we got through that i gotta ask you now like what do you think about the new villain of this series clem oh he's fantastic it's one of the best parts of the show it's funny because he's played by boyd holbrook and you might remember him as one of the primary antagonists from sandman Mm -hmm. which we followed on the show not too long ago he was the corinthian yeah he was like the the same type of like charming sociopathic antagonist he plays that he seems to be uh playing so well (laughs) in these shows he's great Uh, he's also very similar and i I just maybe a couple weeks ago saw the new indiana jones movie and he's in that as well and also in a very similar role he's not the lead antagonist He's not involved as much heavily in the plot, but he's very similar in the way that he's just kind of a pain in the ass to the, to other people he works with and in that same way that he is unjustified. So there's that too. Yeah. I love the character. I love the performance. He's such a great villain, great antagonist for Raylan to go up against. Always got uh, his package in our face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> his tidy whities what do you think about the other antagonistic characters? Because you kind of have his crew, his friends in quotation marks, with Sandy, who's kind of his girl that he's with, and then also with Sweetie, who's kind of like a, a little bit more of an interesting relationship Yes, uh, between the two Sweetie, of them. Sweetie is like a very interesting character because the fact that like he is working for Clement, but it's 
begrudgingly at this point, right? Like, because well, Clement... That's what's weird, because, like, for instance, in the fourth episode ends with Sweetie visiting Clement, and then kind of, like, you kind of see that there's actually kind of something between them. You know, like, it's not... J- like, he's... he. You can tell he's really annoyed by Clement, and really kind of like, oh, I'm stuck in this situation, I don't want to work. But you can also see that Clement's charm has worked on Sweetie as well. Oh, it's, like, it, there's, I mean, there's a, there's There is, like, a, a weird, sh- like, friendship between them you as sh- well. You should know by the end of episode four that sweetie has a plan and that he has an angle and that he is going to use clement to fulfill his his plan that he's he's hatched the idea is like oh you know what he's gonna do is you know he's gonna use clement and then he's gonna like it's gonna backfire on clement and he's gonna get everything he wants Mm-hmm. He, he says that to the lawyer pretty much, you know, like yeah. plainly. But like, that's yeah. that's the thing, though. Is there's like a, it, it is like an interesting relationship, though, because you can tell yeah. that there is some not respect or something, but like you can tell that there's something about Clement that Sweetie likes, and that there's also he's not going to let that get in the way of his plan. But like there's, you can see that the charm works on him a little bit, you know, right, right, and that, yeah, that's yeah. what makes their relationship interesting because it's not completely a begrudging relationship. You also have the lawyer and kind of the relationship between the lawyer and Sweetie and Clement, the three of them together, as well as this other guy that uh, is the whole reason Raylan is in Detroit in the first place when somebody tries to carjack him (laughs) and ends up taking him into custody and going down to Detroit before getting caught up in all this shit. But, right, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's why I said, like, the antagonist side of things in the story is a bit more interesting than the protagonist side. The protagonist, you have Raylan Givens, but the antagonist side, it's much more interesting relationships. Right. Well, yeah, Raylan, you, you have the lawyer, too. Like, she's a pretty big... Yeah, but she's tied she's, into the antagonist story as well. You that's know? true. Yeah, she's kind of like... She crosses uh, the line between the two. Kinda, she's kind of... She's kind of in between. Yeah. Yeah, it's a interesting relationships there, and I, I'm interested to see like where they're going to develop. I mean, we're halfway through the series now, I believe. I think the series is supposed to just be one season, and we're halfway through it now, so I'm not sure how much more is going to be added to the cast, you know, to the personalities here, and how much is just going to be developing or continuing on with with who we have. Because episode four, we introduced, you know, or episode three, I guess we started introducing the whole concept of the Albanians, basically, with just the the mark skender who is the nephew of the albanian crime boss yes um and it was one of clement's marks and yeah the, their introduction and in that's like it's it's about to it's going to change the equation right <laughs> like we've already seen the fallout in episode four of yeah. that and it's going to get worse yeah, it's gonna, things are getting messier. There's, you know, one of the Albanians is dead now. That's gonna cause some friction that, that was kind of not really there yet between the marshals and, the, or the police and, uh, and the Albanian mob. Before it was more Raylan's like, we want to capture Clem. You want to do whatever you want to him after we capture him. That's fine, but we're gonna put him in jail. Then now we kind of actually have like a real conflict now because one of the police officers killed one of the Albanians. So that could cause some issues there besides just the fact that they're racing against each other to track down Clem. Right. Yeah. Ah, so in the first episode, we were introduced to Judge Alvin Guy, played by Keith David. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the inciting thing. Yeah. Clement kills the judge. And, and that's why. Everybody's so so hot to get Clement right now. Yeah, even more so, he he ended up killing Rose, who was his like assistant or something that was with yeah. him. That turned out to be an informant for the police department, and that kind of like is more of a, I think a fire under their asses to get Clem more than anything else. Besides, as we had mentioned, that there was some animosity involving Clem's action towards Raylan's daughter. He didn't actually do anything to him, but there was a kind of an implicit threat that he uh, got inappropriately close. And that set Raylan off and he beat the shit out of Clem. Clem tried to use that, set the whole situation up to kind of go after Raylan through by going to his lawyer, who we mentioned has is like crossing the line between the two sides of the story with Raylan and Clem. And she's basically like, no, you shouldn't have gone after his daughter. I'm not doing shit. But 
those are kind of the dynamics that we've set up through this season so far. Right. Yeah. All right. So that is Justified City Primeval, the first four episodes. We will be discussing the last four episodes once that series is complete. So keep an eye out for that episode. But that's it for our show this week. Next week, we are going to be talking about Barbarian, which is a movie that is available on HBO Max and I believe on Hulu as well. But I saw it initially on HBO Max, so you can check it out there. And my advice going into this, if anybody is going to watch along with us, do not look up anything about the movie. Just go in and watch it and then join our discussion next week because it's just one of those kind of movies that you just kind of want to go in blind. So until then, thank you everybody for listening. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. Will is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our website, thetotalscreen.com. Thetotalscreen.com, if you go there and you open up the container story for any of our podcast episodes, you will find all of the relevant links at the bottom to our Facebook page, to our SoundCloud page, our RSS feed, all of that. So check that out if you wish to. You can subscribe to our podcast through any podcast client of choice like podcast or apple podcast and the entire backlog of our podcast is also available on our youtube channel as well as other content so check that out as well thank you everybody for listening good night good night thank you for listening to the on-screen podcast the official podcast of the total screen visit our website at the total screen.com this podcast can be found on any major podcast client, including Pocket Cast and Apple Podcast. The entire backlog of this podcast and other content can be found on our YouTube channel.